<laughs> Let us start with the Lakers. Um, Anthony Davis has been out for 11 games. The Lakers are six and five without him. Jay Rose, um, as he gets back from that tendinosis. But obviously, all eyes are on LeBron. I mean, I need to know what we should be expecting from him without AD. What is required of him without Anthony Heavy Davis? minutes, um, defensive tenacity. And a lot of what we saw in the previous game, in particular, that Dennis Schroeder has now returned. It's another ball handler that can initiate offense allows Brian to almost play like a free safety or linebacker defensively, get a lot of steals, get a lot of blocks, and be more aggressive offensively. And a lot of times when you're playing with a faster lineup, you see Caruso out there, you see Schroeder out there. Mm -hmm. Now somebody can actually get LeBron layups, mm -hmm. can actually get him dunked right. to get him going. Yeah, you mentioned Dennis Schroeder. Uh, he came back on Friday, had 22 points after missing the previous four games. And Jay Will, you kind of noticed him, obviously an impact player, a guy that LeBron James could use, a part of that arsenal for the offense for the Lakers. Exactly, MT. And look, without Dennis Schroeder or AD on the floor, it's fair to say this Laker team is one-dimensional offensively, right? Everything revolves around LeBron James, very similar to how Luka has to play in Dallas. But with Dennis Schroeder back on the floor, they become multi-dimensional. Like Jay Rose said, another ball handler, another playmaker to make it easy. Plus, also defensively, guys, even though Dame had 35 the other night, Still, Dennis was the point of attack defensively. He changes the dynamic of how this team plays any ad speed. He's one of the missing pieces, and with him and AD, if they're fully healthy, that's a team that can win a championship. Without those two, I don't think we're going to see that team. And, and Rob Polenka, the Lakers general manager, he didn't just trade for Dennis Schroeder uh, from Oklahoma City to win a championship this year, but to re-sign Schroeder long-term and keep him as a, a part of that core. He is a free agent this summer. Uh, and I know Palenka and Schroeder's agent, Alex Saratsis, you know, have talked about an extension. And he's eligible to sign between now and the start of free agency up to a four-year, $83 million extension. That's over $20 million a year. But for the Lakers, there's a great deal of pressure on them to get a deal with Schroeder, not, not allow him to get into free agency where teams like Chicago, New York, uh, need point guards, have cap space. Mm. And so you can't replace Schroeder in free agency with that $5 million uh, exception that would be available to the Lakers. So I think Schroeder's in a great position here between now uh, and free agency. Uh, to either get a great deal with the Lakers or perhaps elsewhere. Look, the Lakers were on a four-game skid. Schroeder came back on Friday. They were able to get the win, kind of getting a little bit of a bounce back. Um, but let's move over to the Warriors because we know Steph Curry. Listen, he's the mm -hmm. third-best scorer in the league. He's doing mm -hmm. what he does. But the expectations weren't necessarily putting the Golden State Warriors in the playoff position. They're seventh right now. So that means someone else is stepping up to the plate for them. Who are we? Sagging all pride. That's Draymond Green. And mm -hmm. the thing about having him back in the lineup is he's going to be a guy that not only initiates their offense and be terrific as it relates to making people around him better, but he's led the league in assists in the month of February. Mm -hmm. And he's shaking off that triple single stink, you know? Yeah. And now he's flirting mm -hmm. with big time triple doubles, having 15 plus assists, seems to be in better shape, seems to be healthy, and seems to be playing with a lot of confidence. I mean, he's essentially the Warriors point guard now. I mean, that is the position, that, that's really the role he's playing on this team, and, and Steph's the shooting guard. And, and I talked to Bob Myers, Golden State's general manager today, and he made a great point about Draymond and how he leads, how he makes people better. He said, you know, some actors become great directors because they know how to work with talent. And that's who Draymond Green is. You know, the leadership uh, he shows with the young players, the role he plays certainly with the veterans, uh, you know, but Green is is really this unique talent who, you know, his greatest skill is winning. And Myers told me about a, a player who came to him and said, mm -hmm. I want to be great. Myers asked him, what is it that you think makes a great player? And, and, and to Bob Myers is, do you impact winning? Mm -hmm. And Draymond Green, as much as any player in this league, he has shown it from the day from college at Michigan State in the NBA in Golden State. He impacts winning, and he's doing it again this year. And that's why I started by saying Saginaw Pride. He was just like that in high school, mm. too, a winner. Yes, he makes people mm. better. 19 assists on Friday. Okay, Professor J. Will, obviously having a guy like Steph Curry makes it easier for Draymond Green, but really what have you seen from Curry during this run where he has to really bear the offensive load? 
Maria, I've seen him be the Stephen Curry that he's always been. It's really funny, out of sight, out of mind, right? When Steph was out, everybody was wondering, what, is Steph Curry still one of the best players in this league? Yes. I, now, I wasn't sure that this team was going to be in playoff contention, but Steph has been doing Steph Curry-like things, really taking on the load. And also say this, I give Steve Kerr a lot of credit. Second fastest pace in the league, but they're also NBA's best at 60 points per game in the paint. They just don't beat you by shooting threes. By their continuity offense, they get a lot of easy lay-ins. And you got to give Kelly Oubre and you got to give Andrew Wiggins a lot of love. Kelly Oubre started off the season 7 to 51 from the three-point line. Now mm -hmm. he's racking it. Now he's shooting. And Andrew Wiggins is shooting a career best from the field. It's really incredible what this team is doing. Yeah, he, he's averaged 20 points so far during February, has Kelly Oubre. But I remember you talking about it, Jay Rose. We were going to be judging Steph this season without Clay, without a KD. Exactly. How he carries that load, and so yep. far he has. And if he could stay healthy and if he while stay carrying healthy. that load, and he's doing it, Maria. Absolutely. We'll see what he has tonight. I see you potent, pointing, Jay Will. What's up, cuz? What's up? That's <laughs> our buddy. No, I just miss y'all. That's we, all. I Jay know. Rose got I my turn too, that goal, really you know, he's still in my style. That's cool, Jay. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.